Hi, my name is Nason Cha, and I'm presenting on a case of painful trigeminal neuropathy. This 66-year-old female patient attended my clinic as she was referred to my clinic for her general dental treatment, as she had not uh, visited the dentist in years given her history of facial pain. Her medical history included the history of hypertension, osteoarthritis, hiatus hernia, gastric ulceration, anxiety, chronic sinus problems, chronic facial pain, etc. And the list of her medications are shown here, which included Salpidol daily and Oxynorm as required. The patient was referred to my clinic by an orofacial pain specialist for her general dental needs, as caries was detected in the area where the patient had pain. The patient's pain symptoms started in 2007, uh, while her implant crowns were being, uh, being screwed into place. The patient reported feeling a sudden, very sh uh, severe, sharp pain, which made her feel quite faint. The implants were placed very shortly after uh, the bridge was made on the adjacent teeth in the area. Her current pain has been present ever since, and the patient described the pain as a constant burning or sandpaper feel localized to the upper right 3, 4, and 5 area, and not alleviated by analgesics. The symptoms were thought to originate from the upper right 6 and 7 at the time, which were subsequently extracted, but failing to control the symptoms, the patient was referred to an endodontist, where upper right 3 was endodontically treated to no avail. In order to manage the patient's symptoms, several medications and nerve blocks were tried over the years, which will be discussed in a bit more detail later. As mentioned, the patient was referred to my clinic for her general dental needs. Upon presentation, the patient was acutely aware that her dental condition had been severely neglected. In particular, she was aware of caries in the painful area, which uh, was of utmost concern to her. The painful area was mainly localized to the palatal of her upper right tree, where there was a constant burning pain with severe allodynia in the area if touched. But the patient also reported a delayed type exacerbation of uh, her constant burning pain if upper right 3 was touched even lightly, or the buckle of upper right 3, 4, and 5 were touched again, even using light pressure. This obviously made oral hygiene in the area extremely difficult. In fact, the patient reported often avoiding the area completely. The patient was extremely nervous about allowing me to examine the area let alone carrying out any form of dental treatment. For this case, I wanted to focus on the dental management of this patient rather than managing her neuropathic symptoms, which in my opinion is extremely important as part of her uh, overall management. But her neuropathic uh, condition will be discussed as part of this case presentation as well. The clinical examination revealed caries in the mesial margin of the upper right 3 and the distal of upper right 1, as shown in the clinical pictures in the previous slide and on the x-rays on this slide. The area outlined in this picture shows the area where severe allodynia was experienced to the slightest touch. And as mentioned, the upper right 3 and 4 and 5 were, uh, uh, if upper right 3 and 4 and 5 were touched, it would exacerbate the pain reported by the patient. The x-rays showed the cavities clearly. The periapical radiograph did not reveal any uh, clear periapical pathology associated with the upper right one and three. And a gap uh, or a negative overhang was also detected in the implant restorations. Based on the history, clinical examination, and eliminating other pathology using imaging studies, the patient was diagnosed with tri uh, chronic trigeminal neuropathic pain or post-traumatic trigeminal neuropathy by her neurologist. However, in the newly published International Classification of Orofacial Pain, clear distinctions are given to post-traumatic trigeminal neuropathy and persistent idiopathic dentoalveolar pain, with the etiology being the most distinguishing feature where PTTN results from a clear or macro trauma, while PIDP is often caused by uh, a more subtle uh, injury to the trigeminal nerve, such as uh, minor surgical or dental treatments. I believe that PIDP would be a more appropriate diagnosis in this case. Obviously, dental caries was also part of the diagnosis given to the patient's chief complaint uh, uh, when she presented to my clinic. 
It is noteworthy that the international classification of orofacial pain distinguishes and defines two separate entities, which are PIFP and PIDP, based on their location and the pain uh, in either case is of a fairly constant nature, uh, but prone to exacerbations. The term PIDP now replaces the previously used terms to describe this condition, such as atypical odontalgia, phantom, phantom tooth pain, and PDA, P, uh, PDAP. It is uh, characterized by an intraoral or dentoalveolar location, unilateral with a deep, dull pressure-like quality with a, um, a full diagnostic criteria described uh, in the um, uh, international classification of orofacial pain. However, other terms have been used to describe the symptoms uh, experienced by different patients, such as aching, burning, throbbing, and often stabbing. And the severity often uh, ranges between mild to severe. It is more commonly found in female patients in their fourth to sixth decades. PIDP can um, happen anywhere in the dentoalveolar area, but it occurs more commonly in the maxillary arch with a predilection to the molar and premolar areas, followed by uh, the incisors and canine areas. Although I believe that the more ac accurate diagnosis for this patient was persistent idiopathic dentoalveolar pain, which is considered technically a subform of persistent idiopathic facial pain rather than PTTN, International classification of headache disorders uh, accepts that there is a continuum that exists between uh, 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 persistent idiopathic facial pain to PTTN. And a detailed discussion of this topic is beyond the scope of this short presentation. The management of patients' uh, facial pain was carried out by the consultant neurologist where multiple medications were used initially but the patient either did not tolerate them, developed severe side effects, or were ineffective. A list of the medications is shown here just for reference. A number of injection therapies or nerve blocks were used, uh, which were mostly ineffective, except for the infraorbital nerve block with corticosteroid, which resulted in a meaningful reduction in the patient's symptoms. These nerve blocks were carried out every six weeks initially but reduced to annual injections or sometimes when the patient's symptoms increased. When the patient attended my clinic, her symptoms were at their lowest pain intensity. Following an extensive dental examination, a number of treatment needs were identified along with the restorations mentioned previously. So the treatment plan for the patient included treating the sensitive, uh, sensitivity reported in the upper left seven using fluoride treatment, general scale and polish to improve the oral hygiene, restorations uh, of lower right six with an amalgam restoration, and when it came to the options for restoring the cavities in the upper right one and three region, a number of options were provided to the patients, which uh, included replacing the bridge after removing the old one and investigating the restorability of those teeth. The other option was to restore the carious lesions with a composite resin restoration or ignoring the carious lesions accepting that this option may lead to further deterioration in the condition of those teeth. After liaising with the patient's neurologist, the second option was deemed to be uh, uh, best uh, serving the patient's need while mitigating the risk of uh, exacerbating the patient's condition. For the interest of time, I'm going to focus on the treatments which had the most impact on this case. The restorations on upper uh, right one and three were completed in two sessions, a month apart, and a scale and polish was carried out, taking all the possible precautions as will be discussed shortly. It is generally recommended that treatment uh, on patients with orofacial pain is to be carried out while the patient's pain is at its lowest pain intensity, and the method used to manage the patient's conditions uh, are at their peak level of effectiveness. Additionally, it is recommended that plenty of local anesthetic be used to provide camouflage and reduce nociceptive nerve activation. Obviously, minimally invasive techniques and keeping treatment sessions short are also uh, of paramount importance, and the patient's comfort perioperatively is also an invaluable consideration. All of the above principles will apply to this case to reduce the risk of a flare-up in the symptoms and clear instructions were given to the patients as to manage any post-operative symptoms.
The patient did not report any exacerbations in her symptoms following the restorations as a consequence of the treatment. The scale and polish was carried out about four months after the restorations, but although the same precautions were taken, it led to a flare-up in the patient's symptoms, which took a number of months to recover to its baseline level of discomfort. Her oral hygiene was found to be acceptable. However, at uh, her one-year review, the patient mentioned that applying 20% benzocaine to the affected area seemed to help take the edge of the pain during the last period uh, up to the one-year review. It should be noted, however, that 20% benzocaine is not licensed in Ireland and is not widely available to patients. At this stage, it was quite clear that the patient was refractory to most treatments commonly used to manage her neuropathic pain. So, in addition to uh, treatment recommendations to maintain her general oral health uh, with regular recalls, a number of other recommendations were made, such as constructing a custom-made matrix to allow prolonged local anesthetic application to the allodynic area, which was thought to reduce the amount uh, of opioid analgesic intake. Although intraoral steroid injections were ineffective in controlling the patient's symptoms, a trial of intraosseous dexamethasone injection may be considered as it has been shown to have a higher affinity for bony penetration. There is emerging evidence in the use of botulinum toxin A in the treatment of neuropathic pain with some promising results in small case series. In a refractory patient where nothing else has worked, this may be a worthwhile treatment option to consider. Cognitive behavioral therapy has also shown promise in the overall management of patients with chronic pain. All of the above options were discussed with the patient in a bid to alleviate some of her symptoms and improve her comfort and quality of life, and also to try and reduce her overall analgesic intake, in particular opioids, and this concern, uh, concern was also communicated with the patient's physician. It was promising that the administration of local anesthetic during her dental treatment blocked her pain, and also the fact that applying topical benzocaine to the area alleviated some of her discomfort, which suggested that her symptoms may have been due to peripheral sensitization. However, the patient reported during her last visit an episode of severe sharp shooting pain while she was brushing to the lower uh, brushing the lower uh, uh, left quadrant after her last dental visit, where the only remotely invasive treatment was um, periodontal probing in the area using a very light pressure, and this raised suspicions about a central component developing. Following that episode, the patient became very anxious about any dental treatments and decided to postpone any dental treatments for the foreseeable future, including constructing a custom uh, a matrix for the upper right quadrant. A phone review was carried out recently where the patient reported a number of exacerbations in her symptoms, especially the limited um, access for her to visit her neurologist and access to nerve blocks given the current COVID-19 situation. The patient further reiterated that she is very anxious about any further treatments at this point in time. It is quite clear that the future management of this patient should include multimodal treatment planning, addressing her pain concerns with locally delivered medications or nerve blocks, a possible consideration to Botox injection in the local area in an attempt to manage her symptoms, and reducing the use of opioid medications and the possible withdrawal program and the enrollment of the patient in a psychotherapeutic program, specifically CBT, to manage her symptoms and improve her quality of life. In conjunction with the above, a preventative program for maintaining her oral health is essential to reduce the risk of any further deterioration in her oral condition. We also included uh, the references I used in uh, this presentation. Thank you for your attention.